Hi, Yarnabees. It's me, Crochet B. Long time no see. So uh, this is going to be another sort of Tales from the Carpet Trail, I guess. Um, it's been a while. I do apologize. Um, it was never meant to be a regular sort of thing, but everybody seems to like it so much. Um, so I've obviously been busy working as much as I can through the, the craziness that's the world has been. Uh, we'll talk about that in a sec. But uh, first of all, we are um, brought to you by Old Milwaukee Beer. Why? Because it's cheap. So first of all, I wanted to thank you all very much for the uh, really nice comments uh, for our one year anniversary video for Sandy and Crochet A. It's really nice to know that, that we've reached so many people that seem to really appreciate uh, us and, uh, and mostly Sandy. It's This is Sandy's thing, let's face it. Um, so um, it's really been great. I'm so proud of her. She's done so well with this. I had no idea this was going to become such a, a big thing as it was. and uh, But I knew from the second that I saw her on video for the first time that she's she's got it. You know, like she comes across so well on film. I don't think she realizes um, how special she is and how the real Sandy comes through. Like, it's pretty amazing. She's, uh, she's really amazing. So my biggest fear is that... Uh, now, the best thing about Sandy is she has no idea how awesome she really is and how beautiful she really is. She has this image of herself where she just doesn't realize how gorgeous she is, which is really good for me because one day she may actually realize that and look over at me and realize, I can do way better than that guy. And she may want to upgrade. So do me a favor. Don't tell her, okay? All right. Anyway, so um, the last few months, obviously, just like the rest of the world, we've been doing our best to uh, to cope with the COVID thing and whatever. And it's it's dramatically affected uh, my business and things here, which is, it's really bizarre because compared to the rest of the world, uh, it's almost non-existent here. We haven't had a case um in Nanaimo for probably a month and a half. There's almost no cases on the island. In all of British Columbia, which is about the size of California, we have not even had 200 deaths. And of those, um, 170 of the 195, I believe, were people over the age of 80. So it's definitely not been the horrible thing that it seems to be in either other parts of the world or what people thought it would be. Yet, despite that, um, we are probably leading the world when it comes to level of paranoia here. People are just losing their minds. Normal, rational people that should be able to look at numbers and realize that they're really not in a whole lot of danger here have been more or less hiding under their beds for the last four months. It's just, I've never seen people react this way to, to anything in my lifetime. Um, and because of that, like my business was down probably 80% in the month of March and April, which is really strange. Um, I have a Facebook group as well uh, of carpet cleaners. So Sandy's got the crochet people. I've got a place called the Carpet Cleaners Lounge where we have carpet cleaners from all over the world, but mostly in the United States. And um, those guys have been just run off their feet 24 seven because people, are so worried about germs and viruses and things that they want everything in their in their house cleaned and disinfected, which to me would make a lot of sense if you're worried about that. Uh, but here, it doesn't seem to work that way. We have um, a lot of people that just do not want anybody to come in the house at all. So I think it's been affected by a few things. One is uh, there was a perception that we just were not open. Um, because a lot of things did shut down here like other places and even some carpet cleaning companies decided to shut down which I think is very irresponsible because we have been labeled an essential service uh, cleaning and janitorial companies they want us out there cleaning and disinfecting and 
killing the virus. That's, you know, and germs and all that. So I think if you're going to do this job, you have to take the responsibility very seriously and you should be out on the front line fighting the fight. We're the fire department. It's kind of the way I look at it. So I don't, I don't really get it. Um, part of the problem is people are just afraid to have you come in. Like, and I've said to them, like, look, we can, uh, you can leave as soon as I show up. You don't have to stay in the home while I clean it. You can just go visit or go shopping or, or whatever. Uh, you can go hide in your bedroom and close the door. You don't even have to see what I look like. I can work around uh, whatever your level of fear is in order to do this job for you. Uh, but there are just some people that, nope, uh, they just won't do it. Um, obviously, in the beginning, a lot of people were initially put out of work. Um, that's changing a bit now in Canada has gone out of its way to shovel money out to every single person that needs it, apparently, except for me. Um, so that's uh, a bit of a less of a concern. But in the beginning, money was tight and people were uncertain about finances. So um, I get that. And then there's the other other ancillary things that go along with it as well, like um, our real estate, which is normally very busy at this time of year because we live in this really nice place that everybody in the world seems to want to move to, even though we keep telling them we're full and we don't want it anymore. Uh, nobody's listening and they like to come here. Uh, we're sort of like the Hawaii of Canada here. We've got the nicest weather and the ocean and the mountains and there's, you can't beat what we have here. So people want to live here, but uh, real estate's been quite slow. Uh, it's starting to pick up now, but for a while there was nothing. Uh, the other issue is we're not getting a lot of uh, renters moving. So a big part of my business, especially in the last week of the month, are renters that are moving and stuff, the move out cleans, we call them. And uh, a lot of them are staying put. Um, we even have a law in place where a person can't be evicted, even if they haven't been paying their rent. So there are some poor landlords that haven't been paid rent for four months, and they cannot evict these people. So uh, that law is actually ending on the 1st of September. And then people are going to be expected to uh, start repaying the back rent as well as the current rent. So I'm foreseeing I might get a big boom at the end of August of either people that are basically sneaking out and moving in the middle of the night to avoid paying the four months back rent or landlords that are going to be evicting because people just haven't been paying them and they deserve to, uh, to be paid as well. So, but... Uh, during this time, I have had some interesting things that different things that I've I've discovered that are going to um, change my business going forward. Um, so I found this Facebook site, and what's nice about it is it's carpet cleaners from all over, and you can ask people opinions of different things and hear about things that are different and maybe not available in your area. And uh, one of the things I discovered is a brand new. Um, a chemical that we have that we can spray on very dirty, dirty, ugly, um, commercial and really nasty uh, residential jobs. And it really does a great job of cutting through um, like real thick dirt and grease and crud. And it's not the sort of thing you'd want to use on a normal everyday uh, situation. But if you have a real ugly one, and I do get quite a bit of those, um, it's the best thing I've ever seen. And it's only been on the market for uh, one month. And the fellow that invented it actually lives um, in Indiana. And uh, so he's been marketing. It's not even in the stores. You have to order uh, direct from them in order to get it. So I had a 40 pound uh, pail of it come. Um, so it's not cheap. I mean, it's 190 US to have it um, delivered and shipped to you. But because I'm in Canada, I had to pay $99 shipping and because of our exchange rate at the end of the day this 40 pound thing cost me uh, about 367 dollars so um, it's quite a bit but um, if i'm disciplined and i only use it on the sort of jobs that i should use it for it should last me a good long time and uh, it's been pretty miraculous some of the stuff i've been able to clean with that so i've always thought that um, there is nothing new under the sun in our business that everything's out there that, that there is no miracle thing on but but apparently there are some things that I don't know about so that was nice to know um, and then the other thing um, as well um, 
In my business, I use, I'm a little bit different. Most of the fellows use the units that are actually built right into the van and they just drag a big long hose in from the street and they, uh, everything's powered by the engine of the van. So the van is continuously running all the time and it burns a lot of gas and very expensive to operate that way. Um, to buy one of those units new um, is about $50,000. So it's a lot of money uh, when you're first starting out. So I did not want to, uh, to borrow that kind of money. So I've started, I've used uh, machines that are called ninjas and warriors. So a ninja is a combination residential and commercial machine. And it's, it's fairly tall and fairly narrow. So it's built to be able to go down uh, narrow hallways and it's uh, built so that you can take it up and down a set of stairs, although it's it's quite heavy, especially when it's full of water, but it is manageable. And then um, my Warrior is about three times the size of the Ninja. So if you can envision, it comes up to about my uh, mid stomach and it's about, you know, this wide. So it's very large, very bulky. It's not really uh, suitable normally to bring into um, a house and up a set of stairs or through narrow hallways. Uh, so for uh, the most part, it's kind of just sat in the garage a lot. Well, I've used the other two quite a bit and it's always kind of bothered me that I, I don't use it more than I do because I paid uh, quite a bit for it. Um, so on this site that I found, there was a discussion. A fellow went on there uh, basically introducing himself and saying that he's just new to carpet cleaning and all he has is a ninja which is my standard machine and he wanted to know like can I have a successful business working with just a ninja or do I need to have um, the full-on truck mount $50,000 thing so a number of people chimed in there were probably 200 threads all together with opinions so of course um, the guys that have the big units were all about oh you gotta go big or go home and you got to have a, a truck mount and be a man. And sometimes you're compensating, I think for, uh, you know, other stuff. But anyway, um, I went on there and I said, listen, for 16 years, I've used uh, ninjas and warriors. I've done every kind of job there is known to man. I've never felt like I'm missing out or that I needed to invest that kind of money. I said, if you're a brand new business, my advice to you, would be to uh, invest your money on marketing and, and websites and things that will actually generate you work and not a big machine that's going to sit there idle because you've spent everything you have on on the truck and now you don't have any customers. So, and, uh, so it became quite the argument. Um, and then a fella came on there and he uh, had kind of the, the definitive word and he said, um, I'm going to settle this argument once and for all. I ran truck mounts for 40 years in my business. At one time, I had 12 carpet cleaning vans in the fleet on the road. I employed all these people. I spent over a million dollars on on equipment, and and I had, I had 15, 20 employees. He said, all I did was just create work for other people. At the end of the day, I didn't put any more money in my pocket, and I was just killing myself. He said, I got rid of all those vans. And now I just have my van with uh, a Ninja. Um, and what was crazy about this is he said he has a, a 700 pound per square inch pump in it. So my pump in a Ninja is 150. So this is like, you know, three, three times that. I'm just thinking it's going to be, I couldn't imagine, you know, using something like this. So I had to ask him like, so I private messaged him like, how the hell do you, make this work and he says I never the ninja never leaves my van I leave it in the van and all I do is run 200 feet of hose into the house just like when I had a truck mount up the stairs and wherever I need to go so the customer doesn't even know uh, what I have in the van and then I have um, extension cords because it's electrically powered doesn't you don't need to have, to have the van your van running and burning the gas and all of that so he has extension cords that he runs to the house and he plugs into the customer's power. So the whole time he's running, it's costing him nothing. And he says, I've never made more money doing it this way on my own with this machine. He says, I'm kicking myself. I wasted all that time, all that money. And he's kind of like, I can't believe I never thought of this. So um, 
So I asked him things like, well, don't you run out of water very quickly because you're pumping it out so fast? And he said, no, he drilled a hole in the side of his tank and he screws a hose in and he runs it to their hose and it automatically fills up his tank. And when it's full, uh, it shuts the water off. And then when it goes down, it fills up and fills up and fills up. So he never runs out. The only time he has to stop is when his uh, dirty water tank gets full of dirty wastewater, which shuts the vacuum off. So he knows if he's 100 feet away, this vacuum stops working, that it's time to dump. So then he goes and he deals with that. But he says, I run all day. I never miss a beat. I'm, I'm making nothing but profit. It's the best thing I've ever had. So it got me thinking that why couldn't I do the same thing with the Warrior? Um, so I did, I got a hold of the people that I bought the machine from to see if they could modify my Warrior to put, it comes with a 200 and a 500 PSI pump. Mine has a 500 or a 200. So I wanted to get a 500 put in thinking it wouldn't be a lot of money, but I was wrong because they'd have to modify everything inside. It was going to cost me like $3,000. So I thought, no, I'm not going to bother doing that. So then I thought I've done large commercial jobs in the past where I've had to add lengths of hose together to have hoses as long as 75 feet to do like the Nanaimo Airport, which is very big, wide open spaces. And it worked fine. I had no loss of suction or power or anything. So I just had a 50 foot hose made up, an extra water line. So for the last three weeks, I've been able to use this machine. I basically just wheel it inside the door. I leave it right there. I plug in, I fill it up and I just run the hose to wherever I have to go in the house. So I have a, a more powerful unit and I have a unit that holds um, three times the water that the Ninja did. So I don't have to stop halfway through my job and fill it back up again. I can do an entire house on one tank of water. It's the easiest thing I've ever seen. I don't have to grunt it up the stairs or, and I'm just sitting here going like, like on the one hand, I'm really happy that I discovered this. On the other hand, I feel like an idiot. I could have been doing this for the last 10 years. It's just never occurred to me. So this goes to show you that no matter what you do or how long you do something, um, there's always things you probably haven't thought of that could uh, improve on what you do or how you do it. Um, so that's kind of my lesson, I guess, a bit for today. And then the other thing is, I know Sandy's already talked to you guys about uh, the dyeing course. So I want to tell you something. People that can dye carpet are rarer than people that can kill dragons or witches. In 16 years of doing this job, I have never met anybody who knew how to do this. It's kind of a lost art. So I've now discovered this fellow in uh, Maryland, down by Washington, D.C., who's going to be teaching Sandy and I a, a course on learning how to dye carpet to fix things like bleach spots, um, hair dye and rug from teenage girls and things that I run into all the time where the option is either to replace the entire carpet or to be, be able to dye these spots. You're going to save your customers hundreds, if not thousands of dollars and be able to charge a decent amount of money for a skill that, frankly, I think if we take this course, we're going to be the only people in our country that know how to do this. There is nobody. And it's for Sandy especially. Sandy's the artsy-fartsy one. I think she's going to be absolutely tremendous at doing this. I know she will. And uh, it's not going to be too hard on her body either, which is also good. And I want to learn to do it in case, you know, Sandy is having a bad day and she's her back's bugging her and she can't do it, I would be able to do that. But this is going to open an entire new chapter in uh, Premier Carpet Cleaning where I can foresee us being overrun with, uh, with <laughs> there goes my work phone, with uh, doing dye jobs. And I think eventually uh, as I get older and I can't do the actual cleaning anymore, I'm going to uh, hire somebody to do the cleaning while well, I can do the, the dyeing and the other things involved with my business. So. Anyway, I guess it's not much of a story, but I'm trying to, to make the best of my time during the COVID thing. So, I mean, business was down. It is picking up again. We are starting to get back to a little better, but I've improved how I do my work and I may be developing a new skill that will change my business a lot. So that's kind of a positive during what's been a very, not very positive time. So hopefully 
uh, the rest of you will also find some way uh, during the downtime to improve uh, your life or your work or um, just things because, you know, life's, life's got to go on. We've all got to be there for each other. And, um, you know, if we just dwell on negative, negative, negative all the time and watch the news and allow ourselves to be scared, we're just never going to get through this stuff. So anyway, I guess that's all I have to say. No funny stories or anything, but that's just my update of sort of what I've been doing since I've seen you guys. And I hope you're all doing well. Uh, thanks again for the kind comments. It's nice to know that you like like what Sandy's doing. She's going to keep doing it. I think she's found her her calling. She's a YouTube star, and I think she's great at it. And uh, I love her. So, okay, guys. Thanks very much. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.